Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. Zahir here and happy to be back. So today's topic, Echo, of course. Now I had a lot of fun playing with her. She is amazing. So let's get down to her kit right away. Now this is after the nerf, although honestly you can still fly across the map either way as long as you remove the toggle, but even so it's just not as before. But here is Echo's kit. So first of all we have Glide. So Glide is Echo's passive ability. So she gets uh, movement speed while flying horizontally. Now, I don't know if she's still going at the same speed or not. It doesn't seem like she does. Now, before the nerf, it was 50% more than what she was going before. Now, I'm not entirely sure from what I understand. If you cancel it, it loses that speed. But at the same time, she does feel faster than before so just the way the devs explained it i'm not entirely sure how it works but she does feel like she's going faster than if she was on the ground so i don't know not entirely sure about that one and then of course vertical speed that will be four meters per second if you want to give me some feedback maybe if you have more accurate information than what i do right now i'm reading off of overwatch wiki so it seems like their information is just a little bit out of date. And if it's not out of date, then it is still 50% buff, but it just doesn't feel that way. Then we've got the primary fire, which is try shot. That would be a projectile. So there's 17 damage per pellet, 51 per shot. And you can headshot. You can literally delete a squishy with just two shots. It's 75 meters per second. You've got three pellets in a triangular pattern and you've got 15 ammo. The sticky bombs then are also a projectile. Sticky bombs would be one of your abilities. You have six bombs. They all shoot out at once and they have five impact damage and 30 explosion damage with a radius of two meters explosion radius. They travel at 50 meters per second and it is on a six second cooldown. Now you can't headshot with this one, but you can just hit every single one sticky bomb on a target and it will absolutely delete them. They are really hard to land though, mostly when you're up in the sky. Now you've got fly, which is how you get up in the sky. You can travel at eight meters per second. It lasts for three seconds and it's on a six second cooldown. You can cancel it. If you have the toggle on, you just press it again to cancel it. Otherwise you can do what I do, which is the new feature they put in. Thank God, because I actually was going to ask for for it the fact that you can just hold it down as you fly around and then you just let go when you need it to stop just a little bit like divas boosters i always have the toggle off for that i hate the toggle it's just too much clicking i would rather hold down the button and then just remove my finger from it when i need to stop using it so i'm quite glad that they added that to her kit and of course just like mercy's valk you just hold space to go up and you crouch to go down during the flight and that will just give you the control that you need to be up in the air then we've got focusing beam so that is obviously as the name says it's a beam damage is 50 per second but if the target is at below 50 hp then you do 200 per second which is crazy the max range is 20 meters which i think that should be nerfed definitely 20 meters doesn't sound like a lot but it is a lot and i understand that the devs wanted her to come in a little closer to be able to do the beam to make sure that you get that reward of finishing off your target but you need to get close and i think 20 meters is not close enough uh, 20 meters is still quite far so maybe something like the range that tracer needs to go at to her fall off maybe started at like 12 meters you want to put it at 15 meters fine okay but 20 20 is much much too far in my opinion and it is on an eight second cooldown it deals four times more the damage if she's targeting someone below 50 hp that also includes barriers by the way and just like flight it can be manually cancelled by pressing it again and just like many other long lasting abilities really you can just cancel it i think it's the best because if you cancel it the cooldown restarts right away so i mean when you finish off a target it really doesn't take that long for it to actually finish you're gonna want to use the full length of your beam if 
you're, for example, getting more than one target that's below HP, and so you need the full length of your beam because you gotta turn around and finish off more targets. Otherwise, if you know you're just assassinating the one target, I would just say turn on the beam as soon as you get the elimination, turn it off right away so that you can get started charging the cooldown because it really does limit what you can do. You're just shooting out that beam you can't really protect yourself that much if somebody's shooting at you you do not a lot of damage so it's just better to cancel it and that way you're ready to protect yourself if somebody's shooting at you and then finally we've got the duplicate so duplicate is the ultimate it is 40 meters range so anyone within that range you're gonna be able to copy them and literally copy them their character it lasts 15 seconds unless you get killed but if you're able Able to last that long it's 15 seconds and you get 6.5 times faster alt charge than the enemy you copied which is crazy <laughs> She instantly becomes the full HP target, and that target can't switch characters. If they go to the spawn, they can't switch it because they've been duplicated. When the duration ends, say for example, you kill the Echo that is duplicated, she doesn't die, she actually just turns back into Echo. And she turns back into Echo with full HP as well, which I don't know if they're gonna keep or they're gonna change it. Some people are debating that she should just go back to you know, whatever HP she had before she turned into whoever it was that she copied. For me, I think it's fine that she turns back into full HP. 200 HP is not that much and she is quite easy to kill as soon as she she turns back. As long as you've got a good hit scan or say you've got a Roadhog, she can just be hooked. You know, there's a lot of counters to her. You can stun her out of it if you've got a McCree. So there's quite a lot of things, but obviously you have to kind of time it right because as she's transforming, whether into Echo after the ult or into whatever character she's turning into, she's invulnerable for that time, kind of like Mercy's res. So it's obviously you have to wait until you see Echo become Echo, then you can stun her to stop her from flying away and then you can kill her. So there's quite a few ways that you can deal with that. I don't think that it would be overpowered for her to go back to full HP really but that's just my opinion and then we've got a few more bits of information here from overwatch's wiki so most developed abilities will disappear after four seconds except for summer's translocator May's ice wall Sigma's experimental barrier, Symmetra's photon barrier, and Zarya's projected barrier. Those disappear right away. And then Junkrat's concussion mine and Riptire detonate immediately. Now, I did test this in the training range and it's pretty awesome. Say you turn into Zarya, you get your grav just in time before you turn back into Echo and you use it. <laughs> then you're you're back into echo and a, a huge a huge combo is actually grav with echo's sticky bombs you can get a lot of kills with that and from the air you're gonna most likely get them all <laughs> imagine you being the one putting the grav in and then you fly above them and then you put your sticky bombs and imagine <laughs> the amount of damage that you do the amount of eliminations that you can do because the grav is still there for at least four seconds the grav is going to have its full length of time whether you are still zarya or you go back to being echo and it's absolutely crazy the damage over time and heal over time effects continue as normal obviously except for any buffs or debuffs applied duplicated heroes for example if you're copying nano lucio you're not going to become a nano lucio <laughs> you're going to become just a regular lucio or if you use sound barrier you're not going to get that sound barrier etc so on and so forth echo obviously cannot target another echo and non-playable characters like bob for example if echo targets a diva pilot then she will duplicate the mech and she can't target behind barriers which is the recent bug fix that they did. Now, I don't know if this is intentional or not, or if this is another bug, but there's also something else that is not mentioned here in the Overwatch wiki, which I have noticed as I was playing myself, that you can copy another Echo if she has used her ult ability and copied someone else because the game reads it as another character rather than Echo herself. And so say for example your team has a Rhine and a Diva, enemy team has a Rhine Orissa, 
right? And the enemy Echo copies your diva, and then you copy the enemy Echo who's turned into a diva. You've got a Ryan and two divas, even though they technically didn't have a diva to copy from until they copied your diva. So you can really use it as a tactical advantage. Wait for them to copy someone first. If it's a good copy, you copy them back. And then say, for example, your diva already has bomb. You've got bomb and you want to do some weird, I don't know, experimental thing of having two bombs at the same time. It doesn't, it doesn't matter as long as you're creating the space, you're getting all the kills, whatever. I mean, I'm not a pro, maybe that's a bad tactic, but in my mind, it seems pretty awesome. You've got two bombs at your disposal. Shoot them up at the same time. You've got double the chances of getting the kills because they've got two bombs they need to evade. Put them in the right place. They can't evade them no matter where they hide, you know? So it, it's pretty cool. I don't know if it's a thing that was done on purpose or not. If it wasn't, unfortunately, it might get fixed eventually. But if it is, it is huge it's massive now that is everything when it comes to the theory of echo and of course everything else has to do with just opinions and my opinion you've kind of heard i just feel that she is well balanced the only thing that i feel that might need a little nerfing would be just the range of her beam maybe like a 12 meter range would be good but i guess that depends on the people's opinion if they think that it's uh, it's good or not. Now, as you may already know, and if you don't, well, you'll know now. I have been struggling to find my DPS main. Like first I thought it was Mei, then I thought it was Hanzo, then I thought it was Tracer, for a while I thought it was Sombra. Then I remembered that my very first golden gun was for Farah, so I tried maining her for a while, but none could satisfy me as much as when I played Reinhardt on tank or Mercy on support. There was always something missing, but I couldn't figure out what it was. And then Blizzard released Echo. And I realized why I couldn't find my DPS main, and that's simply because she had not been released yet. I have always been a flex player at heart since the good old days before 222, and I decided to find a main in each role after 222 came out. But in DPS, there were simply so many heroes that I liked and was pretty okay at that it was just impossible for me to choose which I wanted to specialize in. And then they released Echo. And the whole reason as to why I love Mercy and why I decided to main her was because of her insane mobility once you get used to her kit and the difficulty in positioning yourself with said mobility. And Echo has the same factor and has projectiles like Doomfist that require pharah like tracking and can be as flanky as Tracer, but from the air as well. And let's not forget, she can literally become another hero on the enemy team. So she is literally the embodiment of what I was looking for. I had so much fun playing her. You've seen throughout this video clips of me playing her. I'm not great. Unfortunately, there is a thing that you're not going to be able to play Echo on every single game, like as if it was on live service, you most likely would be able to. After a while, people would, you know, not really play her as much but i don't know for me it's just been arcade 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 and it just hasn't been the same i just want a competitive setting where it had a normal comp one echo on each team and try to really figure out what it would be like to play echo in a competitive setting and arcade just doesn't do it for me it's too it's too much it's four echoes is too much if they had kept it to maybe like two echoes on each team would have been a little bit more manageable but it's four echoes versus four echoes uh, you might as well go on like deathmatch <laughs> everyone's using echo there as well so definitely i think i'm gonna have to put up with it because i really want to specialize in her and i've noticed that at the beginning when i was doing a lot of arcade i was much better than what i am now where i just try to find custom games where you know we could pass around echo but then i'm spending more time playing other characters while echo is being passed around rather than just me practicing echo more and more and getting used to it so i think i'll just fight out whatever stuff i might go through and feelings i might go through of having to fight against four flying echoes and just toughen it out and keep playing because i think i really have found the dps that I want to specialize in and I'm 
so happy that they released her. I hope they don't nerf her too much. We'll see how that turns out. Blizzard has a history of nerfing things to the ground, although at the same time recently they have been quite happy of reversing nerfs, which is something that's absolutely unheard of usually. So hopefully we'll have a little bit more control over what happens to Echo and they will actually listen just that little bit more. But that's it for today anyway. I am really really happy to be back and I'm so happy that they released Echo. It was like an early birthday present for me. I'm so happy. I'm, I just I have no idea how to express how happy I am. If you liked this video I hope you press the like button and subscribe and hit the bell icon to find out when I'll be uploading next. I have finally fixed my stream as well. There was another streamer who was awesome who really helped me in fixing it. His stream link is in the description below as so is mine. So finally it'll be just that little bit more enjoyable to watch <laughs> from now on instead of watching it in really bad quality because it, it was. It was in really bad quality but no more. So thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a lovely rest of the day and please do stay safe. Wash your hands. Do all the stuff that medical professionals are telling you to do and as much as it is a lonely time right now for a lot of us we just have to think about all the good things that we have that we're thankful for and just pretend and it's Thanksgiving every day, minus the family fighting, because apparently that's a huge part of it. I don't know, I'm European, but apparently that, that's a huge part of it. So yeah, just be thankful for what you've got. Keep reminding yourself of that. Don't stop all of your daily routines. Make sure that you have all your schedule set up and you take care of yourself. I know that it's a, a little bit tough, but we'll get through this for definite. That's it for me anyway, and have a lovely rest of the day. Bye!